The Citadel Forged with Fire is an open world RPG survival game with the option for single player or massive multiplayer. Developed by Blue Isles Studios and Virtual Basement, the game itself is extremely underrated. The game itself is like Harry Potter met How to Tame Your Dragon morphed into one game. It's a fantastic world to explore in and I truly do love this game, but is it worth it for you, the lovely person watching this video? Let's jump in and find out. When you start this up, you have the option for join game for online play or custom game for single player play. What I love about this game is that when you click join game to go online, you'll have the option to have the normal speed, which you will level up normally, which the grind takes a little bit, or very fast, which you will level a lot quicker and get more materials when you're harvesting. You'll get hit with a decent loading screen when you first start it. After that, it will go a lot smoother. The customization into the guards with head type and hair type, there's only four options. Which I found lacking, um, I wish they put a little more into that because there are some players that fully like to customize the face and hair. But you could definitely change the size and shape. Um, you could definitely create some monster. When you get to the second phase, you could definitely make a character like any form that you want. Um, you could literally make Hulk, She-Hulk, or make some Slim Jim character. And you could even change the colors. It could get a little freaky from here, as you can see. <laughs> when you create your character and the colors that you wish, uh, you will start off with picking uh, which safe zone you want to pick. It doesn't matter. Um, it, they all are the same, the three safe zones, but the areas around it will be slightly different. You start off by getting fried like an egg on some lava platform, and you start your journey to becoming a master wizard from here. You'll look like a monk that forgot his shoes at the monastery, and you are going to be picking up all these little rune crystals, that's pretty much how you're gonna make everything. Um, I have it on the very fast pace, so I'm gonna level pretty quick. What's awesome is, is that there is a quest line. The main quest line really has zero relevance, but uh, there is a tutorial quest line that you could do that pretty much explains, gives you like a brief summary on what to do. So you could follow that when you start up and you will start off in the safe zone. Uh, all three safe zones pretty much look the same. Um, it doesn't matter which one you start at, you're not going to lose any benefit or anything. And they do look pretty cool. When you do level, you have the four options of health, damage, mana, and carry capacity. You do not have to eat in this game. You can, uh, but you, there is no food or water bar. There are all different options that you could go through, like inventory, journal when you pick up quests, knowledge, which this is where you're going to be spending perk points. There's a lot that you could do, which is awesome. Social and only four tames, which I do not enjoy. You only could have four. But the strong point is going to come from the making of spells and using these individual spells. There is a lot of spells that you can craft, a lot of spells that you could like make them different. You could give them more damage, more range. You could have four weapons on you, two spells on each. And there is, just reflecting back on that, a variety of spells that you could craft and you could pick up items to make those spells unique and different. So you can really become like this awesome sorcerer. The map is gigantic. Um, it will show the world as you go further into it. So this is the character that I just made. And this is my main character as the world shows and shows all the individual little spots that you could go to. The exclamation points are all little side quests that you could do, daily tasks that provide you some nice rewards. When you start off, um, you're gonna pretty much be facing like skeletons and boars. And what's awesome is that you could craft as all this is going on. It will not slow you down, because on the side you could see I'm making items right now. So I do, I do like that feature, it's very enjoyable. Each item that you could craft will be unique as well, because they could have attributes on there. 
which will give you more benefits like movement speed, critical damage, health increase, mana increase, and also like to help find items as well. And it'll be shown by color on how awesome the item is. As, as you explore, if you go online, you're going to see amazing structures that players have made. You'll get there eventually, so definitely keep playing the game and you will absolutely get there. But you're going to start off with wood. Like most games, wood and straw, this game is wood. Very easy to snap everything in. It will adjust for you, so you won't just build foundations like into a mountain or a wall. And then you'll get there to start building something worth defending for. And then have tents to murder everything that comes by. Now as you can see the beginning of the game looks great, building up your own base looks great. Um, I was going to show what I did build on that server that I showed like a couple minutes ago on that new character that I made. But it was a PvP server and somebody knocked it all down. Um, so the PvP is a little toxic on here if you do PvP. Uh, people are just going to knock down your stuff. But here's all the building machines that you can make to make all the materials. You're going to build a lot of these because it does take a little bit to make items in this game. It does take a while. Uh, but there's farming in here, foraging, tailoring. Uh, you can make your own room, which is awesome. And you can fly on because you can play Quidditch in this game. It's not called Quidditch, but that's absolutely amazing. So you can get a broom that shoots fire out of the back of it, which is absolutely awesome. And there are a couple of other ways that you could also fly around here. Uh, you could get a bunch of mounts, like the three dragons that I have. Um, you are limited to four tames, which we'll go over in a few moments. But just having a collection of dragons is absolutely amazing. Um, some do fly faster than others. And to level them, you're pretty much just going to murder the wildlife that is around your base. But it is a lot of fun. To tame these guys, it's not hard. I made a couple of videos on how to tame a couple of them, and you could also get a phoenix as well. That is probably the fastest out of all of them as of right now of making this video. I think there's only a couple of creatures in this game that you can't tame. The rest are tameable. So pretty much everything that I'm going to show, except for Act 1, I think that you could tame everything. You just have that limitation on 4, which I don't like. I don't like the limitation of 4. I get it, so you don't have like an entire army of dragons when you go raid somebody. But, you know, I still like it. Have the, all those guys here. So one of the tabs that you'll have is you'll have all the tames there. You could actually have them follow you if you're across the map, which is cool. You could set them up if they have on, like, aggressive or defensive stance from here. So you don't have to go up to them every single time to change that. There is one more way that you can fly, which is awesome. There are items that you can do that for. And this one, you look like Voldemort. This is how I get around. I think this is absolutely amazing. This is the coolest thing ever. Between all the spells and the way that you can fly and taming all the dragons, this game has been really put well together. To go around the map, you're pretty much going to like go through the caves and camps that are around here. That's pretty much where everything is. That's where you're going to find chests in there. Um, in between, there's not a lot in between. But at the caves and at the bandit camps, which are scattered all around the map, that's where everything's going to be to get items and stuff, and the quests. The quests are going to be like in the towers, which you could teleport in, and when you hit the mastery level like I am in my single player character, you get some insane rewards. Everything will be marked on the map once when you reach that section, so it's broken up very nicely. There's just a lot in between. There's really not that many other creatures that are like not at the camps or in the caves like there might be two that you could find that aren't in the camps or the caves and that's it but there's a lot in between there's a lot of nothingness some of them are filled with npcs as you can see as i'm passing a couple there but then there's a lot of nothing graphic wise this game looks great um there's very few glitches outside of the one that you're seeing now that when you change your weapon while you're doing the voldemort thing uh the, the, it goes away you just have to click fly and unfly and I'll come right back but here's the camp this is where most of the NPCs are gonna be this is where the fight's gonna be and every time that you wipe out a camp you'll be able to grab a chest once when you wipe them all out and when you do that you'll get to the chest 
and this one was absolute garbage, but you will get better drops. Um, once when you get to the higher level camps, they'll definitely drop a little more. But that's it. The game has a lot to offer, but it's the camps and the caves is where the majority of the cooler stuff is going to be. The more in-depth of NPCs are, there's going to be like thicket even flying creatures in there, not to like spoil anything. But what about endgame? Once what happens when you get to mash the level, what is there to do outside of building a cooler base and clearing out the camps? Well, there are four dungeons. Uh, to get into one of the dungeons is a project and a half. There are items that you have to do to make a key to get into the dungeon, and then you have a time limit. Um, as you can see there, you need, you need shards. As of right now, you need 20 shards per dungeon and each one has its own type of shards without spoiling uh this one in particular i made a full video on this if you want to see what a dungeon is like in this game but there are four of them as of making this video originally three at about like a year ago and now they put a fourth one in this year uh, but not to show the whole thing i'm gonna stop at a certain point and show part of the boss but you will be doing these dungeons that will be at endgame and building building up a base, but that's it, that's everything at endgame. Um, the dungeons are really cool, it features other NPCs in there that you wouldn't normally fight outside in the main world. And the bosses themselves do even their own thing, they all have their own attack patterns, which is a unique fight for each one. The pros. Wide selection of spells to make, multiple teams to choose from, massive base building, can play Citadel's version of Quidditch, spell animations are good looking, the four endgame dungeons are unique and fun to complete, the in-game music is great, you could fly on dragons, lots of space to build, and there are not many glitches or bugs in the game, I did not experience that many at all. The cons. Lack of face customization. Long grind at first if you choose normal progression. You will get rated a lot in PvP. A lot of open space in certain areas of the world. And I did not find the main quest line worth it. That's it for the cons for this one. Um, I'm a bit of a fanboy for this game and really thoroughly enjoyed building up my character and becoming some like master sorcerer at endgame. But if you found that I left something out here, definitely comment below and let me know. Uh, but overall, this is a wonderful survival game mixed with magic, base building, crafting, and dragons. No brainer for me. I am easily amused, but this is absolutely an amazing game. Really enjoyed playing this one. The game right now is $40, and it does go on sale often, um, so you can definitely catch it on one of the Steam sales, or even on the PlayStation Store or Xbox One. I had a lot of fun making this video and a lot of fun playing this game. I hope this review of the game helped you determine if this is worth buying for you. See you next time.